There's no introduction I can do for this guy. But in 2016, when I came back and he joined, I came to the board meeting and I said, our company changed forever. And they go, what do you mean? I said, Brent Gove just joins our company. We had 1,500 agents. And let's give it up for the game changer, Mr. Brent Gove! Thank you. You guys are awesome. Hey, real quick, for everyone who's out in the lobby, they're wondering what's going on. We're going to go crazy. Get them in here. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! Yeah, we had all the doors open. There we go. They'll come, they'll come running in. Those, got about 40 people out there, you know, having hallway seminars. Pete, great job, dude. That was awesome. Pete Middleton, I respect you. Love you. You are a baller, baby. So real quick, they asked me to be brief and just kind of share my story. We have a lot of guests here, so I'll tell you this. I'm, you're going to laugh, but I was born in the 60s, okay? We're going, we're going that far back, really. 1966 at Woodstock. Okay, that part's not true. I do, Kathy, my lovely wife, give Kathy a hand. We have eight beautiful kids, all boys, except for four girls. <laughs> and uh, of all of our kids, only one could be here. They're all doing things, but Alyssa is here. You are the good child. Stand up. You are, you are my favorite. Turn around. Whoever shows up is my favorite. <laughs> they all know that. Anyways, you're amazing, though, and beautiful, and we love you. So... You know, I uh, live, grew up in Chula Vista. Anybody from Southern California? Born in San Diego. And then uh, in 1976, moved up to the Sacramento area. Uh, went to call at high school up there. Played rugby, played baseball, basketball, soccer, every sport, ping pong, you know, whatever, dirt clog, rock throwing at each other, whatever we could do as kids, right? And then I went off to a small uh, Bible college up north uh, from, from Sacramento, Chico State. Any Chico State people there? It's not exactly a Bible college. It was uh, voted the number one party school in the nation. I go, perfect credentials, I am going. That is my tribe. People like to have a good time. EXP, make it real estate, fun again! So. I've always been attracted to fun. I think you guys are attracted to fun. I think your clients enjoy you more when you're smiling and you're relaxed and you're intelligent and you're on it, but you're, people want to be around people who are enjoying themselves. So I did that. Then I, uh, I got out of, uh, well, no, I was 19 years old washing dishes and my dad drives up there and he goes, hey, son, I got this great business you and I can do together. And uh, he, he gives me these tapes by Zig Ziglar and I'm listening to Zig Ziglar and washing dishes. I'm learning about goal setting and having a positive mental attitude. And, you, you know, you can if you think you can and, and just get a proximity is power. And I never even learned these things in high school, right? And I thought, this is so great. And he, and he goes, we got this great business. It was like Amazon or Apple, except it was called Amway. And so I'm 19. It might as well have been Amazon or Apple. The word Amway meant nothing to me. And he, he says, there's these biodegradable soap products. They're great. And you and all your college friends can use them. And you won't pollute the lakes and the rivers. And at 19, I'm like, yeah, who wants to pollute the lakes and the rivers? And I go, and you can make money and put yourself through college I'm in. So I signed up all my college buddies. I signed up my college professors and had thousands of people, if you can believe that. So I've been in the persuasion business for a long time. So that business went well until about two, uh, until I was 29 or 26. Then we started having some, some things happen where I had to get into real estate. So I, I ended up uh, almost going, uh, well, we did go bankrupt at 29. It was my gift to myself at 29. And who wants to turn 30 in freshly bankruptcy, right? So I got into real estate. Is anybody, you know, like you hit bottom, how much worse can it go? And, uh, and I, I was nothing against real estate. My mom and dad are 55 year real estate brokers. And the last 25 years were at Coldwell Banker. And yes, my dad was very sick. last three weeks. He said he, he thought at one point he might die. So he's 87 and he had bronchitis. They thought it turned into pneumonia. And he goes, I am just, there was like nothing left, but he beat it. He says he's a nine out of 10. 
Yesterday was the first day the doctor said he could go walking, and that little sucker did two miles down to the river and back. He says hi to everybody. <laughs> he loves coming to these events. <laughs> You guys meet him everywhere. I hear about it from you. I met your dad at the spa. I met your dad at the beach. I met your dad at breakfast. I met your dad walking, you know, wherever. And he prayed for me. And, he, and he's like, you got to meet my dad. He's, he's awesome. And he loves you guys so much. He's 87. If he could spend the rest of his life coming to these things. So he said to let you know he'll see you at Build in San Antonio. Yeah. So, uh. So I got involved with Remax and did that for 13 years and I built a team up to 50, 45 buyers agents in 2005. And, and uh, this is, these are real estate teams. They go like this and they go like this. They go like this and they go like this, right? Right now they're going like this. And some of you are powering through it to here, but one day it'll go like this. And they're like accordions. They go back and forth, right? It's the short game. Masters of the short game. And you're going to become a master of the long game. That's what Berkshire Hathaway did. That's what Coldwell Banker did. It's what Keller Williams did. It's what Southerners did. It's what we get to do. All of us get to be those people that build a sales organization. But we fight like dogs to help each other. There was nobody helping the Sotheby's but the Sotheby's. There was nobody helping John L. Scott but John L. Scott. There was nobody helping Berkshire and Hathaway but Berkshire and Hathaway. But baby, you got a partnership and a team behind you that is second to none. Did you feel the love in the community here today? Did you feel it? It's real. So, uh, um, you know, uh, jumping ahead a little bit, but when I saw EXP, I met Sheila Fairshrown, my sponsor. Give Sheila a hand. Thank you, yeah. Sheila. And, and Rob Flick, he was around here a second ago. Rob Flick and Gene Frederick and Elizabeth Riley. I met the team. I'm like, oh my gosh. And they said, we'll help you. And some of you doubt your guests here. Are they really going to help me? No, we're just going to get you in and say, you know, manana. <laughs> of course we're going to help you. The people who brought you here are going to bleed for you if you will let them. And so you just got to kind of get to work. But so fast forward, the big market correction, 2008, except it started in California in 2005. And uh, we went from 55 closings in one month to 19 the next month. That had never happened. Like 30 less closings in a month. We bounced around 5 or 10, but not 30. And then 17, then 12, then 14. And by December of 2005, 45 of us closed nine homes. The Hunger Games. And uh, that next year, everybody sold their homes, sold their cars, sold their furniture. We are great salespeople. You know, and right, we started suffering. By 2008, I was so desperate, I was meeting with the bankruptcy lawyer myself. He said, yeah, you're still making about 300,000 a year. You can't go bankrupt. You need to not work for a year and have nothing for a year. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. So what do you do? I joined Keller Williams. That's what you do. If you're really desperate. And so 2000, <laughs> end of 2008, 2000, and I, I, I love Keller Williams. I, I'm not, but, but it's just poking fun. They actually are a, a really wonderful company. And so is a lot of other companies. Sotheby's is a great company. They just don't give us the opportunity of equity ownership and revenue share. Agreed? That is what sets us apart. And then we help each other to achieve these things. So I spent nine years at Keller Williams. Loved it. I didn't leave because I was unhappy. My OPs upset me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was going to stay there for another 20 Ride or die, Keller Williams, baby. That's where I was six years ago when Sheila scooped me up off the floor and said, hey, I need to talk to you about this. Thank you for calling me. She said, we haven't talked in two years. I met you for 30 seconds at a Haas Pratt real estate event. Do you remember me? And I didn't. A lot of you don't call people because you're worried they won't remember you. Thank you for calling me. And it didn't matter. In fact, when I didn't remember her, it elicited empathy in me. Like, oh, you idiot. You don't remember this nice woman? And so I said, well, what do you have? You know, whatever it is you're selling, I'm going to buy it now because I'm a, a jerk for not remembering you. Right? Well, not everybody's like that. I know. Let the mean people go. The nice people are here. Right? The positive, kind, good energy. Really, how many people you know that are cranky and crotchety and sour pusses? They're like, they see the model and they go, oh, yeah, that is so beautiful. No, those guys, they don't. They don't come. So who comes? The possibility thinkers the dreamers, the doers, the, the people who believe. I mean, it's, the culture here is incredible. You, it separates the wheat from the chaff. And so, um, you know, found EXP. And when I saw the model, for me, 
Um, I was not excited about the stock at all. I wish they didn't have it. It was a penny stock. And, and, you know, penny stocks are penny stocks. And people would kind of say, oh, it's a garbage stock. And so I wish there was no stock. That was just me. And then, um, but I came for, didn't come for the education and training because Keller Williams was a thousand times better, in my opinion. So why'd I leave? Culture, Keller Williams had better culture. I really didn't know these EXPers very much. And I'm like, nobody's got better culture than Keller Williams. It's great. The revenue share, it was one thing. It, w- it was to be able to um, create the revenue share opportunity. I, I just kind of saw it. And I thought, so what were my goals the first year to tell 10 or 15 agents about EXP? That was it. And then maybe they'd tell some of their friends who tell some of their friends that maybe at the end of year one, there'd be 80 to 100. And then year two, I'd repeat that, 10 to 15 agents. And maybe at the year, year, year two, I'd get another 80 to 100. So I'd have anywhere from 160 to 200 agents after two years. I'd make about 150,000 a year in rev share. Is that good or bad? How, many, how long have you been doing real estate? Do you have 150,000 a year coming in passively? Do you? I didn't. I don't all kinds of, but that, that takes a lot of income. So that's why I joined EXP. So what happens then? Well, dreams come true because, um, oh, by the way, I thought I'd put this here. This is a comprehensive list of everything the world owes you. (laughs) Right? I mean, you got to suffer, struggle, scrap, fight for it. You know, the world is not fair and no one is coming to rescue you. You got to bootstrap it and get after it. And so some of you are thinking, well, the, oz- the obvious uh, deal here is, you know, everyone wants to know is, are we too late? Are we too late? Well, there are almost 90,000 of us. If there were 100, we'd have um, five, I don't know, depending upon, they said two million, now they're saying a million five because people left. But okay, we have five, seven, eight percent market share. That means 93, 94, 95 percent agents are not with us. Another way of saying that is nine out of every 10. So we know we don't have 10%. So we're coming to the tipping point. You're entering right here. Like they say, oh, there's 11,000 agents in California. There's 450,000 agents in California. 11,000 are EXP. 400,000 are not here. Whatever market you're in, nine out of every 10 are not with us. Like who owns a Tesla? Stand up. Okay. Okay. Okay, sit back down. If I said, who's heard of Tesla, who would stand up? Right? Everybody, right? And so, is there room for Tesla to grow? Of course there is. You think they're going to grow? Yeah. Same with the EXP. Now everybody hears of EXP like everybody's heard of Tesla. And guess what? Tesla's going to grow like crazy, and we're going to grow like crazy. We actually have street credibility now. We're that multi-billion dollar company that's debt-free, growing at 20% when everyone grew at negative 10, 15, and 20%. I mean, if you look at what's going on, uh, we got to get that, those stats and put that out. So um, now here's something I want to share with you. You got to keep it simple. This is how my mind thinks. I was a Keller Williams agent. I watched the model explain. I grabbed a yellow notepad on my desk. I turned it sideways. And the first person I thought of was Jeff Willems. Where's Jeff? Where are you, Jeff? You're the right there, baby. Ooh, what'd I do? I went, uh, back up. Oh, no, I'm going, okay. I was trying to hit the, the laser. I don't know if this thing has a laser. No laser, okay. So there's Jeff. I called Joe Marguerite Cress. I called Ron Mackey, a lender, because he had a real estate license. I called Rich Hendrickson, a lender, because he had a real estate license. Um, I called uh, Frank Crandall, manager for REMAX, uh, general manager of eight offices. I called Chris Okamer, manager for Berkshire Hathaway. I called people I knew and said, you have got to look at this. They all said, I don't want to, I'm busy. I said, no, you're going to because you're just going to. You guys are too nice. you like, shut up, sit down, watch the stupid video. Now, the other thing is if you send the video, it's a great way to fail. But if you will watch the video with them, you'll succeed. I watched it with, I don't know, 80, 90, 100 people, and 25 of them signed up. About one out of every four signed up. But I watched it with them. You send the video. They're watching the video, typing an offer. Watching the video, the dog's barking. Watching the video, the doorbell rings. It's Amazon. The dog's barking. And they get up, and they get the door. They talk for five, and they come back. The video's still rolling. They come back. They see an Instagram message from, um, you know, Stacy. They, they come back and then they say, yeah, I watched the video, it's not for me. Did they watch the video? They did not watch the video. Is it their, their fault? 
It's your fault. Well, it's hard to watch the video with them. That's like saying it's hard to get a listening appointment. So what needs to happen? You need to get better. Are you with me? The videos were an hour long back then. We'd watch it for an hour. We'd talk for a half hour. So, so, but this is the list I cranked out. I just started writing down people I knew that I wanted to talk to. And guess what? I started signing them up. Why is there a little whiteout? Some people did a U-turn on me, correct? Right? Vincent St. Louis is on there somewhere, and I'm glad I put him on the list. Now, this is how my brain thinks. This is all I did. That's all you need to do. You don't have to overcomplicate this thing. Here's James's brain. Can we give James a hand? My brain, James' brain. My brain, James' brain. I, I'm proud of my brain. That's all you need to do. What, what's that bottom number down there? 40. They said you tell 40, so I'm in a list of 40. Let's go get it on. Let's go get it on. Let's go do this. Daddy's going caveman for his family. Because why? There were a few times in my career, the second year of my career, I'll never forget it. I will never forget it. We're out of money, I'm out of escrows, and I'm out of time. And I'm panicking, and I'm putting $10 worth of gas in my car. I'm in Antelope, California. And in Antelope, they got patios they turn into homes for cats. There's a HUD repo, and I'm in the patio, and nobody's been to the open house for two hours. It's very, very depressing to be in a vacant home when nobody's coming for hours. It is great for your prayer life. And I remember being in Antelope and being out of money and out of time and feeling hopeless. It's my, just my second year in real estate. And, and I got two kids, a wife to feed, and I got on my knees and I begged God to send someone through that door. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And when you get here, <laughs> there's only one way to go but up. And my secret weapon is, is prayer, is going before the Lord, asking him to help me, right? And this is, this is like, this is what we did for all this. And, and so, man, I remember after I'm praying, I'm no joke, the doorbell rang. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen for you, <laughs> but I remember that. I remember... Four years later, it was 1999, I had three homes in escrow going in the 4th of July, skipping, love 4th of July, everyone comes to our house, fireworks, barbecue, swim, play basketball, have a good time. And it's literally, 4th of July is like Saturday, and it is Friday. And 10 a.m., deal blows out. 11 a.m., deal blows out. Noon, deal blows I lost three deals in three hours, two or three hours. Now I have nothing in escrow. Everyone's distracted with the 4th of July, they're going to the beach, the lake, the river, camping, see relatives. Nobody wants to look at property. It may take a week for them to refocus or two. I got to somehow sell a home. Then if it's a 30 or 45 day escrow, I'm not getting paid till the end of August, maybe September. How am I supposed to take care of my family? And I got pissed. I got frustrated. By the way, if you're miserable, you're in trouble. But if you're frustrated, you're in a perfect position to do something crazy. Like you need to do something a little cray cray. So... You know, that year, I ran out of escrows. I did sell a bunch of homes that year, but I had nothing. You ever had no escrows? Like some of you right now, you have no escrows, and you're a little panicked. So do something crazy. So I set this goal. I had no team, just me. But I set this new goal I'd never set. I'm selling 30 homes in 30 days. Is that a big goal? Yeah. Is it kind of hairy? Yeah. Is it kind of audacious? Like, yeah, right. You're selling 30 homes in 30 days. Like teams don't even do that. So because I set this goal, I asked a new question. Well, how would I sell 30 homes in there? Well, I guess I'd be showing property every day. I went from a wandering generality to a meaningful, specific. Somebody, somewhere seen a house today, a half-plex, a duplex, a condo, a million-dollar home, a starter home, an investment property, a piece of land. I'm showing property today to somebody. And when you get focused like that, it happens. How many of you agree? Here's how most agents are. What do you do today? Oh, I'm going to go down to the office, pull some property, maybe set up some showings this weekend, maybe book an open house, you know, blah, blah, blah. Woo! Wandering generality. That's what Zig Ziglar calls you. And you need to be, okay, we're done with this. This thing is distracting. I got a big head. Everything pops off it, okay? <laughs> it's true. James has been wanting to hear me say that for a long time. You ever golf with me? You'll never see me wear a ball cap. It's, come here, come here, come here. 
X cap. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to borrow your hat. This is super funny, just to give you guys a good laugh. <laughs> so I have a big dome. <laughs> it's like a nuclear sub, man. I got water cooling me off all the time. So <laughs> was that hilarious? It looks good on you. And she looks good on you. He did good. I remember that. Oh, he's stripping me naked in front of all you. This is awesome. It's going to be it's getting good now. That kind of feels good. I stopped myself from saying a lot of stuff just now. So where was I? So I remember meeting with the president of Remax because I was at one point the number one Remax agent in California. It sold 400 homes in a year back in the early 2000s. Agents didn't do that. And he, he's like, oh good, he left Keller Williams or some no-name company, EXP. He'd never even heard the letters. He's like, what are you doing? Come back to Remax, man. I'll meet you anywhere, anytime, anyplace. Buy you lunch, dinner, any second. You and me, you owe me this. And he actually said that to me. He was the president of the old, the largest Remax franchise in the world. I said, okay, James, let's meet. We meet. He said, so what's your goal with this EXP thing? I go, well, they have this revenue share and this stock award system, and I think I could tell 10 or 15 people this year and convince them to do it, and hopefully they'll get to 80 or 100. But James, and he goes, he just nodded, and he's like, oh, okay. I said, but if the stars align, I mean, if it really goes well, I think I could have two, maybe 300 agents my first year. To that, he literally throws his head back. So we're at a very nice restaurant quiet, starts laughing so hard. He was 10 years older than me. I was 51. He's 61. He's like busting up. He goes, son, he leaned forward, put his hand on my shoulder. Son, that's very ambitious of you. I have 28 managers to run our 50 franchises. We don't grow by two to 300 net a year. How are just little you going to do that? And he literally, he didn't quite say it like that, but I'm like, okay, baby. Let's get it on, right? <laughs> so now, remember, I have this powerful weapon that right here. This is a, this is a powerful weapon. I, I, I do TikTok and Instagram. You need, a, you need this, and you need some huevos. Is that Spanish? You need some cojones. That's Cuban. Cojones is Cuban. I also speak sushi. Now. But let's take a look at how little Brent did in his first uh, seven, 70 days. I started October 21st, 2016. So I had 10 days of October, then November, December. We enrolled 20 people. Next month, five. Next month, five. Next month, seven. So I did 37 in five months and 10 days. That's good, right? That's how you create momentum. And then I just stopped. I didn't need to do it anymore because it was just growing so fast. 38, 38, 39, 39, but boom, 42. 10 months after starting, I was the first agent in the history of EXP to actually get to 40. The reason is I honored my time block because every single Friday I would make calls from 10, from, uh, from 2 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Only one day I made myself call agents I somehow knew. And, um, but I remember putting a lot of effort into it through March. But those 20 agents turned into 95. Next month, 148, 188, 256. So by, I'm already got 256. At this six month mark, which is probably about right here, 282, almost 300 agents in six months. Remember he laughed at me? For two to 300 in a year? I've got net 286. Does anyone know what the black belt award is called at Keller Williams? Or what it's for? Sponsoring how many agents in a year? Net growth for the market center, 60. So this would be like one, two, three, four, five, six. This is not me, it is EXP's model. People like the model, I did the work. It is not magic, it is motion. You need to get in motion. So, and you just watch it all the way down here, 531, 10 months in. By the, by the one year anniversary, we had 677 agents. At the end of our full first year, 886 agents net. Is that a good growth for your first year in business? Like, this is a different model. Some of you are saying, yeah, but I'm too late. Nine out of every 10 are not with us. You are not too late. It's like saying Tesla has no ability to grow anymore. Nobody else is going to get solar. Everybody's heard about solar. Baby is on. Now watch this. 
This is January 31st, 2017, one year later. 31st, 2018, 1100. 256, a year later, 1600. 531, a year later, 3200. Most people take a break. Most people get distracted flipping homes, doing builder properties, iconing. I icon four years in a row. I'm cool. I iconed the first year, and then I retired. I only iconed once. I completely dismantled my business. Because any time I was talking to a buyer or seller, I was wasting my time. I got it. I just kind of got it. I'm going to talk to the agents. Vincent goes, should I learn how to sell real estate? Where are you, Vincent? Up here. When you asked me, should I learn how to sell real estate, what did I say to you? I said, please don't. Let's go find agents that have mortgages and car payments and have to sell real estate. Vincent's business today does a couple billion dollars in sales. Should I have spent years teaching him to do real estate? I personally would like to see you sell less and not more. I'd like you to go from 70 deals a year to 50. Yeah, but people won't be attracted to me. Vincent has a thousand agents. He doesn't know anything, and he's really not that attractive. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's a good looking guy. That's his, that's his magic. He sends them selfies and, like, okay, Vincent, I'll sign up. You're beautiful. But, um, so. Look at the rev share. First 10 days, 1,900 bucks. First month, 5,000. 10, 10, 27, 25, 26, 34, 34, 25, 33. I mean, I got right up to where we were making some serious money. First year, $286,000 year one. But I treated it very, very seriously. And I went from 60 deals a year to 30. And Remax Gold showed everybody, look, EXP ruined Brinko's life. He was selling 60, he closed 30. And I didn't like it, it kind of bothered me. But then I reminded myself, that I had 886 agents. That became 3,200. That became, are you with me? Like Gary Keller's volume went up or dropped as he built a sales organization. Dave Linegar's personal sales, he used to do open houses and show property. Did it go up or did it drop? Did the Sotheby's sell more or sell less than build a brand and have, are you guys with me? Sell because you need to pay your bills and do all that. but. I, I'm, I'm the one who would like you to sell less. Now, if you don't, I can't pay your bills, sell more. If you can't pay your bills, work 18 hours a day. Do, be a man, be a woman, do what you have to do for your family. Set a goal to sell 30 homes in 30 days. And guess what, that month, I started showing property every day, sometimes two times a day, three times a day, four times a day. And by the, by within seven days, I'm writing offers every single day, sometimes two, three, four offers a day. And then you gotta get them accepted. It was a competitive market. I didn't hit my goal 30. My record was seven sales in a month at that point in my career. So pretty good, would you feel good about that? And I'm going, will I ever get back to seven? That month I did 14. When you double your all time record, so if you need money, go to work. Sell real estate. But some of you don't need like Rick Jiha. He was doing 60 listings a year, he set a goal. He'd been in the XP for a year. He's kicking butt, doing well. He goes, this year, I'm going to do 100 listings. I'm so excited. I've never done it before. And I've never been so upset with someone at EXP in my life. I'm like, don't you dare do 100 listings. Once you go from 60 down to 40, and let's go sign up 25 to 40 new agents and watch what that does. Now today, he has thousands and thousands and thousands. Please stop iconing. You're chasing the wrong rabbit. Your ladder's going up the wrong road. If you continue to icon, I will continue to find you in 10 years selling real estate, 20 years. My parents sold it for 55 years. When they were done, they got their final check from Coldwell Banker. That was a decade ago. My mom was 75, she's 85. My dad was 77, he's 87. They've never gotten one check since. The worst thing you could do for your retirement is be in real estate, unless you're at EXP. So we're a little bit different. By the way, if you're here today and you're fired up and you're going, but man, I, I, I need money. I'm gonna lose my car, I'm gonna lose my house, I'm worried about paying the rent, please sell real estate. Please go sell 30 homes in the next 30 days for your family. Are you with me? Do you understand where I am with this deal? So Randy Bird, stand up. One of my best buddies in the whole world. Turn around, Randy, wave at everybody. He is a, a very, very successful Tom Ferry coach. He's the reason 
Uh, it, Bill Pipes is also here, one of Bill Pipes' best buddies in the world. And, um, and of course, I knew Bill too. And, and, uh, but bottom line is he has a, a boot camp that starts on April 6th, the week after you get back. And so if you need to make sales, where's Don Peach? Don, are you in the room? Stand up, Don. Don's been a part of Randy's boot camp. Um, and you just completed the boot camp. How many homes did you just sell or put in escrow just now? So, two homes, three listings. Just to, how many of you could use two two sales and three listings? Anybody? Are listings money in the bank? Yes, they are. And then listings have what? Babies, sign calls, open house, internet leads. So his boot camp is starting. Let me see. Sorry, guys. I got one. I only got room for one. It's a 12-week boot camp. Gives you something to focus. Don't go home and go. What now? What? Join for those of you that need to like make some money. Join Randy's boot camp. He's got three elite trainers in there, and it's a thousand bucks. But if you sign up today, he's giving a 60% off. And let's see if I can do this right. It's uh, bootcamp.re. Bootcamp, for those of you that need this, do it. .re. You said not to sell real estate if you don't need to, right? Some of you, you make plenty of money. I was making plenty. I went from 60 to 30. I created margin to play the long game. You're masters of the short game. Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini, Howard Brenton, uh, Craig Proctor, Gary Keller taught you to be masters of the short game. I did everything they told me and worked for decades. My parents worked for five decades. I want you to play the long game. That's a smaller group of people. And you can learn that and we will help you. So again, bootcamp.re. And if you put in Cabo 23, if you put in Cabo 23, you get 60% off. It won't be a thousand bucks. It's $400 for a 12 week boot camp, 90 minutes every week. So three high level coaches. And you guys will be inspired. I've heard many good things. So I just want to throw that in there. Now, I want to talk about dreams coming true a little bit because you dare to dream a little and do this thing. Oh, by the way, everyone's wondering about James and I's relationship. Well, the next picture will kind of show you the relationship we have. It's the best picture I could find of us. And it is, it is really meaningful to me. So now I will let you guess who's who, okay? really hard to do. It's really hard to do. We call this routine, it's a shtick, it's called good cop, bad cop. And you can guess who the good cop is and who the bad cop is. He's always trying to say, I'm the dog on the left. And he is, he's awesome, but he can also get a little grumpy. Look at that, look at the eyes, it's like, really? Really? But you need a partner. Hopefully it's your, your spouse or whoever. But it, you know, at that time, Kathy was busy with the kids and James needed a job and I hired James and it was amazing. And we just worked. He was strong at everything I was weak at. And I was strong at everything he was weak at. That's what makes a really good partnership. And so it's, it's been amazing. I love that picture. And here is the very first on accident meeting we ever did with 88 of us in Scottsdale. There's Rob Flick and he's leading it. We just said, let's get a room. And there we are. That was, that, that was 1,200 agents in EXP at that time that turned into, it's going to turn into a million. It's going to happen. But you got to set goals. So I'm going to give you an example. I wanted to have 5,000 agents by April 30th, 2019, which means I wrote these goals probably at the end of 2017, right? or somewhere in there, then all of 2018, maybe, maybe beginning of 2018, then I had a year to hit this. So 5,000 agents, so then 6,000, then seven, then eight, then 10, 10,000 by December 31st, 2019. And then we hit six, seven, eight, 10, then we hit 20, then we hit 30, then we hit 40. We're over 40,000 agents today. Had you have goals written out like this? Rob Litzinger, were these goals, I don't know, are you in the room, Rob? Rob, the voice of God, he runs this event. Give Rob a hand with James. James, well, James runs the event, but Rob runs all the tech, all the tech back there, all the slides, all this. But Rob, was this not taped to my desk with scotch tape? Like we had to take razors to get these goals off my desk, right? And do we have these goals under glass at my office with spotlights on them to show them? It's like, look, this is the first widget 
Thomas Edison ever built. It's like the Smithsonian, right? Like these are important. By the way, we hit every single goal on here except for the last one, 100,000 agents. But I have till December 31st, 2029. So I'm asking you a question. What's gonna happen 2000, December 31st, 2033? Are you thinking 10 years from now? Are you thinking five years from now? Because we were. And I saw it again and again and again and again and again and again. And I never got distracted with doing buildings. Or uh, I can't even describe them. Developments. I'm going to develop this property and put in 40 homes. Here, here's a gun. Shoot yourself. <laughs> I'm going to flip 20 homes this year and make a million dollars. Here's two guns. <laughs> guns are dangerous. Yes, just pull the trigger. Now, so... Vincent taught me these things. He left his cat outside for a year and a half. Now, <laughs> don't ever say that again. The dog people were like, oh my God, did he just say that? The cat people are pissed. Now, um, I like cats. I, personally, I wouldn't have done that. No, <laughs> I just threw them under the bus. All right, no. Okay, so you, know, you want to be a leader? Hey, if you want to be a leader, you can't make everybody happy. Go sell ice cream. The only person that makes everybody happy, what? The ice cream man. You're going to take some shots. Your well-meaning, dear friend, intelligent, very successful, highly educated accountant is going to say, don't do it. And you're going to go, hmm, maybe I'm making a mistake. What are accountants known not to be? Risk takers. Be careful who you get your advice from. Does that make sense? Stop getting distracted too. So do you have your group drawn out? I got 40 growing legs, 40. I know how many are in each leg. And uh, let me see, Vincent, you moved up to number four, by the way. He was five last time he looked, yeah. He, he was back on number 12. He went 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Rick and Casey Jiha better duck. But I have, and then my group sees this stuff. This is at my home in Puerto Rico. That board is probably four feet high and five or six feet across. That is a massive board on a glass table. And I stare at that. And my wife. There's two things I love a lot. Okay, three. But anyways. But I, I call people. This reminds me to call people. I'm tracking their numbers. I have their goals, right? And then my goals in green below. I, I have where are they actually at in our goals. These are their actual numbers. And this year we'll finish 20 legs over 100 in them. It's not about you making it. It's about you helping people make it. Remember Zig Ziglar? Help enough people get what they want. You'll get what you want. So draw out your group. Set goals. These are my goals for 2023. Written in my hand, like, look at how unprofessional he is. And look at how well it's going. Right? So 2023, you have 80 FLQAs on the front line. That's, is that twice 40? Yes. 30,000 in the seven levels, over 50,000 overall. 29 legs with over 100 plus in the organization. 12 legs with over 400. Seven with over 1,000. And 23 legs with at least 20 FLQA because they want them to make money. Nothing there is about me making money. The money's a byproduct of value. Are you with you? The money's always come. All my goals, remember the earlier goals? There was nothing about make a million dollars or two. I mean, maybe that's a mistake on my part. I don't know, but it's working out okay. So, whoops. All right. So here is my inner child. This is how I really feel inside. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm desperate, even right now, for more money, no, for impact, for change. I want to be an agent of change. I want to be a history maker. You want to be a history maker. You want to be a change agent. So go get caveman, get cavewoman, go do it. Well, they, they called, well, Bob was mean to me, century 21. We overcomplicate this, remember the yellow notepad? What are we trying to do? We're trying to get Bill or Jill to leave Coldwell Banker and come DEXP, correct? 
Are we splitting atoms, putting satellites into space? No. So realize who your inner child is. This is my motivations, my beautiful family, missing two. And this is a great Instagram photo. And Alyssa set this up. She's like, oh, everyone wear white and tan and blah, blah, blah. And of course, there's only one that they don't always listen, right? And, uh, but that's not the real family. The next picture is our family when Nolan graduated from high school. It was during COVID. It was like 110. They're like, wear hats, wear sunglasses. People, we have ambulances on standby because if we go anywhere with air conditioning, you'll all die of COVID. And so we had to be on the football field. So there's the real GOAT family right there. If you're wondering what we look like. We got the sombrero, right? We have the freaking millennial who still had to wear the dang mask. We had the, the, uh, everybody's got, I love him. I love him. He's my millennial, but did you have to leave it on for the picture? Every time I see that, I still get a little, mm. now, and this one, this is my artsy, gardeny, trippy little chick. I love her. She's amazing. I would die for Megan. And I've, I, we're, we've just, it's amazing. Sarah. And I think that's Kathy. And no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, that's Kathy. Oh, that's no, bad. I'm Isaac, Alyssa, Nolan, Dylan, Christina, that guy, and Ty. And so that is the real go family. Um, yeah, you can hear from me. And then when you, this is when Kathy hit it 200 yards and almost got a hole in one. The girls, Susan and Kathy were so excited, they hugged anyways, like it was a, two, a hole in one. She went there and posed. It's not in the cup, but it was close enough, right? And so, but you get to have friends and you get to travel around the world together. And, and man, we are, we're, we're going safaris, we're going all over. We're playing golf courses all over the world. There's Big Willie over there and Scott Lewis and Gina and myself. And, and there we are, this is just normal lunch in Puerto Rico, you just go hand pick a lobster. Like there were 10 different tanks and these were the little ones. I got bigger ones, these are just, that's just lunch. And, and so, by the way, everyone wants to know where I live in Puerto Rico, this is my home, this is where I live. And so there's, it's not bad. Every morning the sun rises there, every night the moon comes up through the palm trees, it's pretty sweet. And then, Friends, people we love and care about, to be able to travel the world, the people that mean the most to us. And, and it's just, it's powerful. And getting to travel together, that's the Dorado in, in Puerto Rico. Look at how terrible Puerto Rico is. Can you, can you all, on the count of three, go, oh, uh, for one, two, three. Thank you. By the way, this is a Ritz-Carlton property reserve. There's only five in the world, and one of them's by the rainforest in Puerto Rico. That place is amazing. All right, so some of you like boats. Some of you like planes. Some of you like the family cabin. That's us. We're going to buy that this year in Incline Village, Lake Tahoe. And we, we work for it. Do we worship at that? No, but that's going to entertain grandchildren and the kids. You guys, you guys will be staying at my cabin. I'm buying the things to share. Gene, Susan, share. Share. I'm trying to be a good example for them. You don't need a plane. You need a friend with a plane, Jay Kinder. Just bought his jet. I, don't, I was going to get one, but no, no, don't get the jet. But anyways, so here's, here's the deal. I just wanted to kind of wrap up the slideshow portion. We're not done yet, but these are the two people that mean the world to me. My mom and my dad, 55-year real estate brokers. My dad's like, oh, you know, he retired 10 years ago, you know, and he never knew about EXP. He goes, I wish, I wish I'd had this opportunity. But you do have this opportunity. Will you squander it? Will you allow other people's opinions to keep you back? Will you allow your ego to keep you broke? What, do they, what would they think of me? They might be mean to me. That's your ego. Nobody likes rejection or no, so I get that. But you have to be willing to risk your ego, not your capital. Your ego is keeping you from doing this thing. You're so worried about what they'll say, or it'll be weird if I call them. Focus on your kids, focus on your wife, focus on freedom, focus on the things that you want to do and you power through it and focus on them, how this will help them. You're focused on the fear. Your fear is so big, your dreams are so small. I'm not saying to focus on a Rolex watch and a mansion and a Ferrari. What I'm saying is focus on the ability to give, focus on time with your family, focus on travel or whatever it is. And if it happens to be a watch or a car or whatever, I mean, heck, I want a cabin, right? How many think it's a, a terrible idea for me to have that for my family? How many think it's a terrible idea for you to have that for your family? Now, if this is like what you worship at, okay, that might be a bad idea. Whoops. 
went the wrong way. But there's my mom and dad. They poured into me my whole life. They told me they love me. They're proud of me. And I realized not all of you got that. But these two are amazing. My dad's a super sweet, nice golden retriever. My mom is Attila the Hun. She's an absolute killer. I remember her when I first got real estate. If I could just get them to my open house, if I could just get my hands on them, they're mine. I'm exactly like that. If you walk into my open house, you're not leaving. It's not safe for you. Because my dreams are so big. Tell me you already have an agent. No, say, I already have an agent. That's awesome. Everybody does. There's no law that says you can't have two. And what you don't know about me, as I'm networked with the top agents throughout La Jolla, throughout Boston, throughout Nashville, I know every one of them. And I'm, I'll tell you what, let me look for you because I'm going to bring you off market listings. They say, well, I already have Zillow and Redfin and I get MLS feed. You're, listen, man, can I just be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? Can you talk to people like this? You are shopping leftovers. And if you do get a good one, you'll get in a bidding war. Tyler, can I ask you a question? Do you want to be in a bidding war? How long have you been looking with your agent now? Say four months. Tyler, you should have had a home three months ago. I am going to find you the home of your dreams in the next two or three weeks. I'm asking for permission to give you red carpet service. I'm going to give you service that you've never had in your life. You talk to them like that? Yes! They don't forget me. And I said, will you let me spoil you and your beautiful wife? I'm going to pretend you're married. I don't know if you're married or not. Not married? Okay, this is awkward moment. <laughs> Does your wife know about her? <laughs> kidding, kidding. So anyways, this is very innocent. They're just sitting by each other. Calm down. But I noticed you were kind of, no, okay. So, so Tyler. Will you allow me to blow your mind? Here's the worst thing that's going to happen. You don't hear from me. But here's what's going to happen in the next week or two, three. I'm going to call you the property that your agent could never tell you about because it's not in the MLS. And it's going to be the home of your dreams and it's going to be crickets from your agent. I'm going to do this for you. And if I bring you a home that you're like, oh my gosh, this is it. You can call your agent, have them make an offer, or maybe I've earned the right to make the offer on your behalf. Will you allow me to spoil you? Will you, Tyler? They never say no. Here's what you guys do. Well, do you have an agent? Oh, you do? Okay, well, here's my card. Call me if, if it doesn't work out with your agent. Why would you do that? Where's your energy? Can you feel the energy I had there? Like, watch that again and again and again and start going after it. And that's why I had 60 to 70 buyer leads, why I could set a goal to sell 30 homes in 30 days, because I had 60 to 70 buyers out there, and I called them every day. I texted them. I checked the MLS. I went in the morning. I'm looking, 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 looking. I'm calling agents. I'm calling Michael Valdez. You got any new listings in La Jolla? I'm calling Tyler. You got any new listings in Boston, wherever I happen to live? And I'm calling agents. You got anything coming online? And I did what I said I wasn't going to do. It wasn't just a ploy or a tactic. And guess what? You can provide for your family if you need to. Did I end my slideshow? Yeah, my poor mom and dad. Yeah, my mom started that with open houses. I can get my hands on them. Remember that? All right. So three minutes left. Where do we end this with? Here's where we end it. So what's it going to be? What about you? Am I going to pick you and then it happens for you? Or are you going to pick yourself? Are you going to stand up? Listen to me. I had someone come up to me today. I think it was Renee. She says, you don't know me, but you're going to know me. I like that. I'm like, woo -hoo. she's from Charlotte. Did I get it right, Renee? Was it Renee? Thank God. I met a few of you. I'm working on it, okay? Right on, Renee. Stand up, Renee. There she is. Look at Renee. She goes, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. I'm like, awesome. And I, I want to know you. But we have a saying in the business, and I say this with respect to all of you, your actions speak so loud, I can hardly hear what you're saying. So get out there and go to work. Your partners will come. Well, my upline made a mistake. Brent missed a call. Gene missed a Zoom. Um, Joey missed a Zoom. We're not perfect. Forgive us, and let's keep working together. Are you with me? Getting mad at your upline and say, I got to do this alone is a fool's errand. So here's the deal. What's it going to be? You're going to be masters of the short game or masters of the long game. And so here's what I need you to do. 
I need to stop focusing on icon. I mean, if you're selling and you just happen to hit it, great. That is not the play here. I'm just straight up. I mean, if you don't want to attract, go to icon. But I need you to create margin, and I want you to get an office. Every one of you should be working out of an office. Well, that goes against the, uh, the EXP model. Oh, no, it doesn't. EXP is a cloud-based model. They don't have offices. You should have an office. Do you know that 80% of all the stars in this company have an office? I went and got an office six years ago. I'm still there. It's 950 bucks a month. Very inexpensive. It's not 40000 a month, 50000 It's $950 a month. Get a very small office. John Jennings got one across the way from me, 495 bucks a month. Affordable? It's a hub. Somewhere to have a cadence. Remember Kevin and Fred? Somewhere to have a sales meeting. So A, get a hub. Now, if you already have, like in Sacramento, come work out of my hub. I have like nine offices now, big glass conference rooms. We got stuff. You don't need to get a hub. But if you're somewhere where that isn't going on, go partner with a life insurance agent. Go partner with a financial planner. Go pro partner with a probate lawyer. Get a desk, a hub, somewhere to conduct your business. Number two, attend a monthly sales meeting. Well, there aren't any where I am. Then you start them every month. This month, social media. Next month, become a powerhouse listing agent. Next month, dominate your market with um, lead generation. Next month, uh, business planning. Just a title. Then invite people to come in and speak. Well, I won't get this many people. If you have five people, great. My meeting started with five people. James, I, I think the very first meeting we had, we had maybe, okay, we might have had 15 or 20, but there weren't like this, right? And now we do meetings every month and we get three, four, five hundred 500 people coming every month. We have a cadence every month. Well, we don't have that. Whose fault is that? Are you going to keep looking at Lars? Well, Lars, they won't do that for you. You do it for you. James, did we look to Sheila, Rob, and Jean to come do monthly meetings in Sacramento? We start doing it immediately. Day one, did we have a hub day one? I'm still there, six years later, same office, 950 bucks a month. Get a hub, have a sales meeting, and then, and then by the way, every Tuesday at 1.30, I do agent attraction training for 30 minutes. You can all attend, it's on a Zoom, zoomwithbrent.live, every Tuesday, 1.30 to two o'clock. And it's like a multivitamin shot for agent attraction. At 2.10 Pacific, 5.10 Eastern, 2.10 Pacific, I do sales mastery, a 20 minute, here's how you get buyers to buy, here's how you get sellers to sell, here's how you do lead generation, here's how you follow up, here's how you negotiate. So I'm doing that at 2.10, again, Zoom with Brent.live, I wanna mention that. But I, I wanna kind of wrap up with this. Stop sending the video. Stop sending the video. When I watched a video with people, and I've got to 40 in 10 months. Well, it's hard. I get it. So it's becoming a listing agent. And then I became a listing agent because I was determined. Are you determined? Do you have fire in your belly? Do you have passion? Are you willing to get on the struggle bus and stay on it till you figure it out? Are you willing to risk your ego? You can't. That's why franchises are so popular. I'll buy a Taco Bell. I'll buy a Keller Williams. Anything. Just don't make me risk my ego. I'll give you a quarter million dollars, a million dollars for a McDonald's. Just don't make me risk my precious ego. Are you with me? Can you feel me? And so here's the deal. Here's the cool thing. This doesn't cost anything. You have to look you in the face and ask yourself if you're tough enough. What is it you call people with love? I got this under the hood, but I call them. Hey, Michael, how you doing in Spring Cove? Underneath, I'm a desperate man. Are you a desperate woman? How bad do you want this? Let me tell you what. And then we're building a love boat and we're having fun. Are you doing, having, doing fun things? Do you notice we didn't bring you to somewhere that was, I mean, we brought you to Cabo. Do you like it? We're going to be in San Antonio at the JW Merritt Five Star Resort. We were just in Maui. We bring to you beautiful locations and we do stuff in the morning. You're going to, I'm it. You're going to play all the rest of the day and tonight. We got a, a, a breakout session in 10 minutes with amazing bill pipes. Do not go anywhere. If you can, that'll be so good. But I'm, I'm going to end with this. And I think it's got to get down to a super, super personal level for you. And so I believe it was 1905, little Jimmy's born. And for the, some of you have heard this story, but a lot of you have not. And a true story. I made it, they made a movie about this kid's life. Like any kid in America, a lot of kids in 1905. He's the only one they made a movie about. So by the time he's uh, 20 years old, it's uh, 1925. And he starts boxing. He starts winning. And he's like a naturally gifted boxer. 
2026, 2027, he's, moved, he's in New York City. 27, by 28, he's a star. He's actually making money. He's got a beautiful home. He's got a beautiful uh, Model T Ford. He's got, uh, remember the fur coats in the Roaring Twenties? Big fur coat. He's a star. He's, he's like, uh, you know, Conor McGregor. He's like Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. I mean, he's like the guy. And, and then in 2029, or 1929, right before the stock market crashed, a few months before that, he gets in a fight with one of the top heavyweight contenders. True story. And in that fight, he fought valiantly. He fought so hard, he broke his right hand. But he also almost died. He basically got knocked out and hurt so bad, he almost died in the ring. It scared the New York Boxing Commission so much, they revoked his boxing license. And so here he is, out of work, unemployed boxer with no skills. It was his whole life. He had a wife and two little kids. Then the stock market crashes. And he's trying to get work, and he's got a cast on, a broken right hand, and he's desperate. A year later, 1930, his kids are starving to death. They can't buy oil for their New York apartment to heat their apartment. Their breath is in the apartment in the morning. They're literally freezing the cat. Their kids have pneumonia. It is a desperate situation. The milkman quits delivering the milk. They have no food. They're literally sharing a piece of ham for like four people. And he got in such a bad spot that he went and found his old boxing manager and he said, give me a fight. And his boxing manager says, get away from me, you loser, get away. And he picks him up, you gotta watch the movie, puts him against the wall, his feet are three feet off the ground. He goes, you owe me this, you made so much money off that. Get me a fight, any fight. He literally was desperate. And he gets him, I'll give you, okay, put me down, put me down, I'll give you one fight, 50 bucks. And he smiles, 50 bucks was nothing for a fat fight back then. He goes, 50 bucks? He goes, yeah, that's it, you loser, 50 bucks and leave me alone. He goes, Will you do it? Will you fight for 50 bucks? He goes, for 50 bucks, I fight my grandmother. He goes, he was so desperate. And so he gets in that fight, no training, and just makes mince meat of the guy, like nothing flat. And then his old man, she's like, well, there's the old Jimmy. He goes, you want another fight? He goes, yeah, 100 bucks. Beats that guy. Out of no training, they made a movie about it. Not, he just went, whoosh, just makes, beats everybody. Now it's uh, 1932, two, three years into the Great Depression, and Max Baer, heavyweight champion in the world, he gets in a fight. He's going to the heavyweight, but he gets, takes on, he has to get the guy who almost killed him. His wife's begging him not to enter the fight. He's like, baby, I got this. I got this. So right before the fight, he, they have this big talk. He goes to there, and this big, tall, strapping guy, way bigger than him, he, they pray, they go do the fight. By the fifth round, that guy goes back to his, in his chair in the round. He's sitting back exhausted, holding the mouthpiece out, and his trainer's like, dude, what's the matter with you? You whipped this guy last time. You whipped this guy. And, he, and those of you who have seen the movie, he leans back, he looks up at his trainer, and he said, he ain't the same guy. He ain't the same guy. And then he goes on to just destroy the guy who almost killed him. And then now he gets to fight Max Bear, heavyweight champion in the world, and the press conference before the show. He's in there. He's sitting there. How you feeling, Jimmy? Feeling pretty good. And everybody's voting for him. He's like the, he's like Sea Biscuit. He came out of nowhere, right? And 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 they're asking him questions. And all of a sudden, one of the guys in the press, it's like about 40 press there, he goes, "Hey, Jimmy, what changed? Like, what in the world happened to you? You never quite fought like this." And he he goes, "Oh." Good question. He smiled. He looked down. They're all waiting. He goes, I know what I'm fighting for. <laughs> he goes, I know what I'm fighting for. He didn't break up like I did, but I think about it. You got to be moved with emotion if you're going to do this thing. And they all went, Oh my gosh, Cinderella Man knows what he's fighting for. It's the movie Cinderella Man. And they all write down fiercely, He knows what he's fighting for. And the same guy puts heads down. The same guy pops up and he goes, Ask the obvious question. So what are you fighting for, Jimmy? And all the other press guys pop up and they go, oh, that's a great question. What are you fighting for? And he looks at him, he nods, eyes kind of watery. And he goes, I'm fighting for milk. What are you fighting for? You fighting for a jet? I think you'll fall short. He used to fight for the cars and the jet and the house. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. And it got him so far. But what got him to break through is he started fighting for the right things. His family, his children. You're in a war. By the way, 
he went on to beat Max Bear and become the heavyweight champion of the world. He, he absolutely pulverized him. Max Bear was fighting to defend the title, fighting for money, fighting for this, and he was, he'd kill two men in the, in the boxing ring. So watch that movie. It's called Cinderella Man. Watch it. So again, as we leave today, I want you to go away from here and ask yourself some questions. Why am I at EXP? What is my intention? What do I plan on doing? What am I willing to give up? Am I willing to quit letting my ego rule me? Uh, really? Because I promise you, this is an ego risk. It is not a capital risk. God bless you guys. I love you all. Have a great week. Thank you.